Hi, this is Jeremy for xrmdevs.com. In this video, we're going to create a plugin. In this plugin, we're going to create a follow-up task and we're going to associate this follow-up task with a newly created account. In the event execution pipeline, we're going to register this plugin to fire post operations so when the account has been created. Okay, so before we write this plugin, let's quickly create an account and I'll show you what I intend on doing. So we're gonna call this first account and we're gonna save it. Inside the account, when we take a look at it, we will take a look at the activities and there'll be nothing there. So when this account plugin is running, we will create the follow-up task and it will show up as an activity. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio 2015 and let's go ahead and create a new project. We're going to create a class library using the .NET 452 framework, which is now the minimum supported framework by Microsoft. I'm going to call this XRM Plugins and Let's do some cleanup. So let's rename this class one to account create plugin. Personally, I like to give my plugins names that I can relate to as far as entities and the message types. So it's easy for referencing later on. Okay, we need to add some references after this. We're going to need to add a reference to the Microsoft XRM SDK DLL, which is found in the SDK that you downloaded earlier. You'll also need to add a reference to system.runtime.serialization so that are the two main references that you'll need to add. Okay, so the final thing we need to do before we get to write code is we need to sign this project. So let's go ahead and assign the assembly. I'm going to create a new strong name key file for this assembly. I'm just going to call it XRM plugins. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to remove the protect my key password and just click OK. OK, so we have our key and we have our references. So now let's go ahead and bring in the iPlugin interface from the XRM SDK DLL. Let's go ahead and then implement this interface. OK, so let's also get rid of this boilerplate code here and let's obtain a reference to the plugin execution context service using the service provider parameter that's been passed into the execute method of this plugin. Once we've done this, we need to validate the context. So we're going to check the context input parameters. Remember, this is a parameter collection and we're going to see if this parameter collection contains a parameter called target. So this is the key. So it's a key value pair essentially. And also that if it does contain a target, we check that that target is in fact an entity. Sometimes uh, a target and an input parameter can be of type entity reference, so we need to check that. So if it is an entity, what we're going to do is we're going to direct cast this uh, input parameter target into an entity. So it's, this is going to represent our account. Once we have our account, we're just going to quickly check that the logical name is in fact an account. Now this is really defensive coding, it's a good practice. We're going to register this plugin in the correct event on the correct message, so it should be an account, but just in case we need to code it accordingly and defensively. Once we've done that, we're going to create a new entity called a follow-up task, and the entity type is a, a task. We're going to set the attribute subject to send email to the new customer. Nice and easy. Next we're going to set the follow-up tasks description attribute to follow up uh, with the customer. How about that? Nice and simple. Following this we're going to set the follow-up tasks schedule start attribute to a date time seven days from now. So after seven days of the new account being created, there'll be a follow-up task. So we'll set this for seven days and we'll also set the follow-up tasks attribute scheduled end to seven days as well. So we only want this to happen once. So the, the general idea is we create the account the after the account has been created in the database, this plugin will execute we'll check to see that it's an account and then we'll create a follow-up task and then assign it. 
So the follow-up task category, we're just going to set it to the primary entity name, which is pulled from the context, which will be account. And then we're going to check the context output parameters. So these are the parameters that are going to come back um, after the database transaction is completed. So we're going to check to see if the output parameters contains an ID. This ID will be the unique ID for the account that we've just created. So we're going to say we're going to create a GUID uh, regarding object ID and we're going to set that new GUID to the output parameter of the ID of the account that we just created. And then we have a regarding object type and that's going to be an account. Then we're going to set the follow-up task regarding object ID attribute. So this is going to be an entity reference. So we're basically saying this follow-up task has an entity reference to this new account that we've just created provided with the object type, which is a type account, and then the regarding object ID, which is the good. So essentially it's creating a reference um, to that account. So creating that relationship. Then finally after this we just need to uh, obtain a reference to our service factory uh, again using the get service method of the service provider parameter that's passed into the execute method of this plugin and then from that we can from the factory we can create an instance of the organization service and we're going to use the context of the user ID that's executing the plugin. And then finally, we're just going to say service.create follow-up task. So there's the create right there. So that's all there is from a coding perspective. So now let's go and go into our SDK folder on our desktop. And let's go into the tools folder, plugin registration. Let's hit the plugin registration application executable. We're going to create a new connection and we're going to connect to our instance. So add your username and password like so and click show advance to see this and then click log in. This will take a few moments to log in uh, depending on how busy the network is and how fast your connection is. Okay, so now we have a list of all the registered plugins and custom workflow activities. We're going to register a new assembly. So let's point to the project on our desktop, XRM plugins assembly that we, we created and we signed earlier on, and then we're going to register the selected plugin, like so. Once this has been registered, let's go ahead and expand that. We're going to right click on this account create plugin, so this is the plugin that we've just registered, and now we're going to register a new step. Now in this step we're going to define the message which is a create, so we want this to run on the create message. The primary entity is the account entity, there is no secondary entity. And just pay attention down the bottom, we're going to execute this post operation, so after the record has been created and committed to the database. So this is going to be stage 40. The execution mode is synchronous, that's fine. And I'll just throw in that it can be executed offline as well. And then click register new step. So that's all there is to it as far as registering the plugin goes. So now let's go back into our XRM instance and we're going to go to our accounts and let's create a new account real quick. And I'm going to call this account second account. And then I'm just going to save this. So this time what I'm expecting now is to see a new follow-up task created and I should be able to see that on my activities wall. So if I go into this new account that I've just created, second account, and I scroll over and look at the activities wall, and there it is, send an email to the new customer, follow up with the customer, and that's how we create a follow-up task and associate it with our newly created account. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Okay, so now we've seen the fun magic. I'm going to unregister this plugin now. So I'm going to go back into the SDK folder on my desktop, go into plugin registration and hit the executable. I'm going to again create a new connection. Uh, enter the details, click login. So it'll take a few moments. 
Now once this fires up, all I'm going to do is right click on the XRAM plugins assembly that I registered. Um, and I'm going to click on the account create plugin and then unregister. So it's a bit of an overkill, unregister. You can actually disable a plugin, but I'm just unregistering it completely. So now this time when I create a new account, I'm going to call this third account. And if I save this, you'll notice there that the activities wall, there will not be a follow-up task that's generated like so. And there we have it. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.